This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Automatic, the small adapter that turns your clunker into a smarter connected car. For more information on their brand new Automatic Pro, visit automatic.com slash twit and enter the limited time offer code TWIT for $20 off the new device. On today's show, you'll know how to make a skirt for your aqua vase. Welcome to Know How, it's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I am Father Robert Balliser. And I am Brian Burnett. And for the next however many minutes it takes, we're going to be showing you some of the projects that we've been geeking out to so you can take them home and geek out on your own. Brian! Padre! I know that we don't really feel this because of the weird time dilation thing we have between the two of us, uh, but this is actually your first episode back. <laughs> right. No, that uh, totally makes sense yeah, because yeah. I was in Europe for the last couple of weeks. Month. Month. <laughs> like a long time, a long time. <laughs> However, this time works. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we did IFA and that was a lot of fun. That was. And then I decided to hang out in Europe since I had never been there before mm -hmm. for a little bit longer. <laughs> and now I'm here. I'm now back here. on oh, Thursday. We will be showing little bits and pieces of IFA because we did film some stuff specifically for Know How. Yep. It was a... It was an interesting show. I mean, when you compare it to like CES or NAB, Black well, Hat or DEF CON. <laughs> yeah, well, Black Hat, DEF CON, that's yeah, something completely weird. different. But uh, I've never done CES. So at CES this upcoming year, 2017, will be my first one. But as far as NAB, yeah, it was a lot different because that's just broadcaster stuff. And, and I think it's also the space. that The, the Messe at uh, yeah, in Berlin. Yeah, that was part of the challenge. It's not part really of the a fun. convention center. It's it like a bunch of warehouses next to each other. All stacked up on mm. each other and figuring out the, the layout and stuff. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. I look forward to showing some of those future segments. But uh, as far as focusing on today's episode, it looks like you're making the cryogenic um, tube <laughs> our, from our Empire. Tube. Are yeah, we going to put a little Luke that. Skywalker in there? Well, I think what we figured out is that this project is going to come back again and again because the base components can be used for so much more than just a vase. Right. And uh, endangering your co-host because uh, uh, there's we don't, a lot not in There's a lot of exposed wires and... You know, as long as it doesn't electrocute me, I kind of <laughs> figure it's okay. Right? <laughs> We're working with electric and water. water. I mean, what could go And we wrong? actually do have some high voltage, so, you know, mix oh, good, that in. good. I, it wouldn't be a know-how episode if my life wasn't well, threatened. One thing that I do have to fix before we actually do the final version of this next week is um, I have connectors here Yeah. that because I was lazy, I just used the, the connectors I had in my inventory, <laughs> but they connect completely different voltages to one another. What? So you have to be like, is this the connector that looks like this that has 12 volts or the connector that looks like this and has 120 volts? Hmm... <laughs> mm, okay, well, let's find out. Just plug it uh, in. But you're not going to get that, folks. What you're going to get is the finished version, uh, again, all through our show notes. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last two episodes, we made the LED array, which also includes this nice little heat sink slash fan that we got off of our, our junk b uh, PC teardown, remember? Right, right. We so pulled we, that off there. Using some components. We also have the base, which has an Arduino, and it has the WS2812 lights in here, which mm -hmm. is actually, let me, let me turn off the, uh, the main light. And actually, if you bring down the house lights, oh, see, we're getting groovy there. It's, it's got the little illumination down below. And remember, we made that really dim because that's where the roots are going to go, and roots don't like intense light. Right, but we wanted uh, to... <laughs> Make it a little weird. Yeah, make it a little weird, and it's one of those things that you, you <laughs> with the blue lights too, oh, that looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, you could totally bring this to like a party or something, and just you make it like a disco ball sort of thing. <laughs> now, what we do need to do though, is we need to make the last component, the major component here, and that's this part. This is the skirt. I've gone through a couple of d different revisions, but it's basically the same design as we had downloadable for the first, right. uh, but I've made one major alteration. Oh, have you? Uh, you'll notice that it now has wings. Oh. And what the wings do is they clamp onto the same aluminum risers that hold the LED array up, mm -hmm. which kind of gets the whole thing a bit more stable. It's it's pretty good right now. I mean, this... That's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. But once I have this, it will have six connection points between all the various pieces 
it's really going to hold it down. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. You can just carry it like a, with a little handle on the top. Precisely. And this is unique because there's actually three 3D printed components that go into making the skirt. It is important, however, because like if you look at the top here, this is ultimately where I'm going to put my plants. If you go to the overhead, Alex, uh, there we go. This is where the, the little basket, I'm going to bring the basket in next week, mm -hmm. is going to go down that allows me to do any sort of uh, hydroponic slash aquaponic growing. Right. Uh, also, I've made an adapter for this that will allow me to take the pods from the uh, Aero Garden. <laughs> Should so, we show them one of them right now? No, no, we're going to make yeah. that. That's a surprise for next week. <laughs> There's a little Quasimodo one over there that I, don't want, it's, I feel like is my, the result of my work. It might have been. <laughs> it, okay, it, it, we'll let but them it's imagine the, it's still what a alive, plant would look like. Right? There, it's still yeah. alive. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this down. We're going to pull this away because we need to make room for what we're building this week. And what we're building this week is everything. Actually, oh, let me pull geez. those wires away. Yeah. Just don't let them touch the metal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got three pieces that we're going to be making. We've got this, which was what I call the cap. This actually goes on top of our little glass jar, this is what's going to allow me to adapt anything to my five inch vase here. Right. Then I have this, this is sort of the top assembly. It goes up top and it allows me to have a little space where the water that I might pour in the top to start off the plant, mm -hmm. it will drain down the hole rather than off the side of the, of the cap. I don't want uh -huh, that. Oh, clever. Right. But I'm going to seal these together with silicone which means I, I want something to come down between them because I don't want the silicone kind of burst, bursting out and, and screwing up the look. Right. Because, uh, you know, I do want this to look good. And this is designed just to fit over the top, and it will give me that nice tight seal. Yeah. It'll make it look good, and at the same time, it will allow me to clamp onto the two aluminum risers yeah. that are already on the side and give it sort of stability. Yeah, no. do, you, do you need to use the silicone then if you have the skirt around it? Um, I would, Yeah. just because just this is not watertight. It's tight, but it's not watertight. Yeah. And we want to make sure that this thing's not going to leak because it would drip there's down and... power running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that would be bad. Electricity, water, <laughs> they don't like it. Gonna have a bad time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's look at some of the things that we need for this. Of course, we're gonna need the 3D printed files, which we've given to you in mm -hmm. all of our uh, our show notes. We're also gonna need silicone sealant. This is some stuff that I got off of uh, Home Depot. I think I bought this for four dollars or two. But Alex, we've got a we've got a uh, link there. This is stuff on Amazon that I've used. Oh, it's uh, an adhesive too. It's an adhesive, right? So it's a glue slash sealant. What it will allow us to do is to to glue the pieces together and at the same time keep them watertight because we okay. are designing in some holes into the cap because we need a place to put through the air tube, right? Right. And I don't want that to be the site where water just leaks all over the place. Okay, makes okay. sense. So that's, yeah, that's important. The other thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need an air pump. Well, this is going to be aerating the water, which is what's gonna allow the roots not to die. Right. Because we, we learned from Grow How <laughs> that if you put roots in water that has no oxygen, they just, they starve, they suffocate. Right. And your plant dies. So oh. I bought this. Not really happy with this, but this is what we're gonna use. We've got another link for this. Mm -hmm. This is $11. The reason why I suggest this is because it already includes the tubing and the air stone, which you do need. Okay. Otherwise, you'd have to buy it separately. I'm still looking for a DC version because I would like the entire project to be DC. Right now, uh, both lights, the fan and the Arduino are running DC, but then this runs AC. So I need uh, okay, so you need plugs. separate con connectors. Yeah, I'm not, not It's not a, yeah. That. Yeah, mm -hmm. not unified. I'll make it better. I'll make okay. it better. But this is what we got for but now. Otherwise, it works fine. Works fine until okay. I find a better DC pump. Uh, this is what we're going to use. Okay. And, and I mean, it's been running since we created this thing, so obviously, it's going to work. <laughs> yeah, uh, right. At the expense of our coworkers. At the expense <laughs> of our coworkers. They hated this, that thing. Maybe this will not work, and it, like start a fire. We'll just find <laughs> out. They're like we're gonna. Hey, you know what? Guys, this could burn down the studio. We're going to go to Berlin for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, let us know if anything bad happens. <laughs> the last bit that you're going to need are the risers. These are the things on the side. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I got a link here for Hobby King. This is where I got them. They're super cheap. I mean, you can get these things for under a buck depending on how long you Hobby want. Hobby So are these drone these are These are drone parts. Oh, okay. But I mean, they're, they're so useful They're universal. Elsewhere. They're yeah. really useful. They're support members. But as you can tell, this is, I think this is 450 millimeters long, and this is 650 millimeters long. Okay. But the nice thing about this is you can change them based on how high you want the light from the base. Right, or how tall your plant gets after it's started growing. Precisely. So there's really no limit. You just get longer 
of these and you're good to go. No Although problem. I would probably stop about three feet above. Because then the light's dispersed too much yeah, and the just, plant You're probably... so far away. Yeah. You just trim it, prune it to get yeah. it down. Okay. Well, and what we learned too is that when you start cutting the plant back, it gets fuller. Gets, yep. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, you are going to need some specialized tools here. You could do it without them, but I would not suggest you try that because they get messy, especially when you mess with sealant. Oh. Uh, clamps. The These clamps. are always useful. Yeah. These are tecton clamps. I've got a, a link here for them. Um, mm -hmm. I, you can get these for like five bucks. And what they allow you to do is they just allow you to hold down surfaces. And in our particular case, we're going to hold together the top assembly until the, the sealant slash glue is dry. Okay. How yeah. long does that take? Uh, it should dry in an hour, but I always leave it for 24. The longer just to you be safe. It, yeah. yeah. And they, they, the, these are actually combinations. These are clamps slash spreaders. If I use it this way, as I squeeze the trigger, it gets closer and closer until... Clamp. Blah. I could also flip this. This allows me to reverse it. I just take off these uh, these screws here, and it becomes a spreader. As you as you squeeze this, it forces something further and further apart. So you're like, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. That's <laughs> there you go. Okay, so we're gonna use this to make sure that our assembly holds together while the glue is still wet. All right. Yeah, all right. we'll need that. Now the die is set. That, that's all the things that we're gonna need. As long as you've got a 3D printer or if you're willing to send away the STL files that we give you to a place like Shapeways, right. you can now create this project. Or if you're fortunate enough to have a makerspace near you, like right. Aaron Newcomb's in uh, Benicia? Is yeah. Benicia? Yeah, yeah. Benicia. You, could, you could go down to a makerspace, and I'm sure they'd be more than happy to, to help you out. Indeed. Now, we're going to get straight to the 3D printing side of the project, but before we do that, you know what I want to do, Brian? What? I want to thank the sponsor of Know How. We should. Yeah. Now, you know, the funny thing is... Everything is smart now, right? Uh, yeah, mostly yeah, everything. Smartphones, smart, smart TVs, yeah, pretty smart. Smart yeah. cars, yeah, smart, smart cars. cars. Well, what happens if you you like the functionality of something like a smart car, of using your smartphone or your smart device, yeah. but you have a dumb car? Uh, there's there's probably a way around that. There now, is. Right? Make your car smarter. Make your car smarter. Get all the information, all the metrics that you desire with Automatic. Now, Automatic is a different kind of company. They don't make your car. They just make your car smarter. Uh, the way it works is there's a tiny little dongle that plugs into the onboard data port of your, your car, your controller area network. Gives it access to all the diagnostic codes your engine might be sending, to the entertainment system, to, to your odometer, to your fuel efficiency information. And then it sends all that information to your phone, to your device, to the cloud, so that you can analyze how you're driving. That means that you drive better, you drive more efficiently, and you keep your car in better shape, all with Automatic. Now, Automatic has just launched the Automatic Pro. This is actually incredibly cool. It's their new unlimited 3G car adapter with no monthly fee or subscription. Uh, always there, 3G lets you know where your vehicle is parked at any time or lets you track your vehicle even when you're not in it. It works with IFTTT, or what I call IFTTT, for endless customization, connecting your car to the rest of your life so that you can easily, say, file business expenses. It would automatically update that field in whatever financial program that you're using so that it knows, hey, you know what, you traveled 49 miles a day for work, that should be reimbursed. You can't do that with any of the other solutions. In fact, Automatic is really the only one that understands that you need to make your data work. You can even link your car to a Nest thermostat or an Amazon Echo. Imagine being able to say, hey, Alexa, sorry about that, anyone who has an Echo, where did I park my car? And yes, you can do that. Once you load up the automatic skill, you can ask things like its position. Do I have enough gas to get from here to here? Automatic isn't just an accessory, it's a smart lifestyle choice. Now, my personal favorite feature is the fact that you can get human help in a crash. Automatic Pro detects severe accidents, and trained responders will automatically be called through your cell phone for help when you can't. Or if you don't have a cell phone connected, it will go through the automatic service. It works on nearly every car made after 1996, and it just takes minutes to connect to your car and then link it with your iPhone, your Android device via Bluetooth, and, of course, the 3G network. Even, it even integrates with Apple Watch and Pebble. Now, I've been using Automatic, just the regular version, probably for the last year or so, and it really has changed the way that I drive. I mean, yeah, it's the gamification of driving. It makes me want to beat my score. It makes me want to drive better. And really, can we ask for more? So here's what we want you to do. We want you to make Automatic part of your driving lifestyle. 
Automatic Pro is normally $129.95, but when you use our exclusive offer code TWIT, you'll save $20. Just visit automatic.com slash TWIT. That's automatic.com slash TWIT for more information. And remember to use our offer code TWIT to save $20 off the regular purchase price. Once again, that's automatic.com slash TWIT. And we thank Automatic for their support of know-how. All right, let's get to it. All right. We need to make these pieces. <laughs> just, like, just like in the last two episodes, I really want people to get comfortable with redesigning the parts that we give them. It's right. not just download the STLs and print them. It's download them, modify them the way that you want it to be. Like, for example, if you want a bigger base, if you want a bigger skirt, if you want a larger LED array. Add more supports. Yeah. There you go. You can do all of that by understanding how we put it together in the first place. Yeah, and you've done the, the nice thing of showing people the, the individual pieces and mm -hmm. then putting them together. Like, and if you want to skip it, you could just go to the, the final piece and print it out. But uh, if you ever want to make modifications, it's good to know. It is always good to know. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make each of those three components individually. We're mm -hmm. going to start with the cap. So what you want to do is, uh, if you could go to my computer, Alex, we're going to go ahead and use the helper files just like we did last time. Let's go ahead and make this full screen. We're going to browse, and I've got them on my desktop, under uh, Aqua Base Top Assembly. They're in the helper files folder, and I've got them all labeled. So just go from top to bottom. We're going to start, if you could zoom in here a little bit, Alex, we're going to start with Aqua Base underscore cap shell. And what that does is that gives us this. This is the basic shell that's going to make up that top cap. In fact, I could print this up right now, and this would fit right over the top. Mm -hmm. But what this doesn't have is it doesn't have the other little features that I've added over time. For example, this is nice, but I wanted a little bit more structure in there. I wanted some supports so that the entire weight of the top assembly, once I've had a plant and you know, rock wool and maybe some clay balls, uh, I, I wanted to, to not crack, and I right. wasn't really sure that was going to be able to do it. So what, what, I, are, what are the thicknesses that you have on here? Probably uh, two it, millimeters? It's two and a little bit less in some places. Right, because this is a lot, you start running into a lot of filament if you yes, get you any do. thicker than that. Precisely. Okay. So rather than making it super thick, what I did was I just made sure that the stress points had an extra material. Cool, smart. Yeah, so I'm going to browse and we're going to add A2. And what A2 gives us is this. Now, this is the internal support. Uh, I'm actually going to turn this into a hole, and that will make sure that anything we add, as I add all these supports, will yeah. automatically be cut out because I cannot cover up this hole. If I do that, the, the basket won't fit. Right. It, it wouldn't be a cap. It would just be a lid. <laughs> that, that would not would work. Bad. So let's go ahead and add number three. These are my mid-support spars. Oops. Wait. Uh, wait. Okay. Wait. Uh, import that, please. Stop it. There we go. And looks like that. Uh -huh. Now you know why I added that hole, because it, that hole automatically chops off all these internal pieces. Right. But if you look, I now have a slightly thicker spars mm -hmm. that will take the weight of the cap on top of the jar. Yeah, no, that looks strong. Yeah, and it also kind of looks like a TIE fighter. It does, exactly what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was late. I, was, I wanted something cool. All right, so I've added my supports. Now let's go ahead and add the... Uh, the main void. And uh, the way I'm going to do this is turn this back into a color, and then I'm going to import this like so. And now, if you look down here, oh, not only do I have the spars, but notice how that internal, oh, that's there, uh, that internal piece is raised. There we go. So this and that together are ta is taking the weight, which means right. I can make this lower surface really, really thin, and it's not going to compromise the overall strength. Right. Okay. Cool. And again, I, I more of the Tie Fighter right. thing. Going on. <laughs> That's a, just a nice touch. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and add the last component here. And the last component is uh, the air void. And the air void, what it, all it is, is it's the uh, the the hole through which the silicon tube is going to go. Oh, okay. So very the small bubble. Then uh, right. Yeah. But I do have to move this. Now I'm going to have to move this. I'm going to turn it into a hole first. Right. But I'm going to have to move this. 50 millimeters to the left and 20 millimeters up. Now, I could do that individually. I could take this and just like try to drag it yeah. and maybe ah. measure, but that's a pain in the butt and I'm probably not going to get it right. Can you dial it in? And, well, yes. Uh, remember, I need to make this the same on both the top and the bottom. Right. On both the cap. <laughs> you want it to line up. It's yeah. got to line up. So, 
there's a function here. If I hold down Shift and then I hit the arrow key, it moves it 10. Oh, okay. So what I do is I move it over 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 2, un 2. Now that's over 50 and up 20. That's a little shortcut for Tinkercad. Oh, smart. Yeah. Okay. So my finished file looks like this. I now have the ability to build this, and it will make me a nice, light, very strong structure that is lined up so that when I glue this to the, to the top, it should allow me to get the uh, the air hose through it, mm -hmm. but still maintain a nice tight seal up, up top. Yeah, no, that should work. Keep it tight. Keep it tight. And then, I guess, so if, worst case scenario, if you get it wrong, you just drill a hole through it? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's better if you just get, get it, right it right the first time. Get just it right, keep it tight. Five over, two up. So just you hold down shift and hit the arrow key. Arrow, arrow, arrow key. Arrow. Every time you do it, that's 10 millimeters. And the, is there any way to, uh, like, Type in numbers for specifically putting a, an item on the grid? I thought there used to be, but I can't do it anymore, so I don't know if it's just the browser I'm using or if they took that func that feature away. Okay, because every time you import a new file, it just does it centered. like it centers. centered. It centers yeah. it, it does what's called a center and land. So it puts it in the middle, and then it puts it down on top of the, the, the frame. So some, that's why okay. sometimes we have to do the minor adjustments, like lift it up two millimeters and right. push it over 10 millimeters. All right, so let's go ahead and wipe this out. And... We're going to make the second piece. And the second piece is the shelf. That's this thing, the thing that's going to go up top. Right. It's going to look just like the cap, but a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, the wall is actually thinner. Oh. Because okay. this is not going to be supporting anything. The only thing right. that this is doing is it's creating a watertight seal, or it's creating a water barrier, barrier. from keeping it from flooding over the sides. Got it. Got All it. right. So here we go. We're going to. Browse. We're going to take the B files now. So B1, which is my Aquavase shelf shell. And just like the cap shell, all it's going to do is give, give me my outside boom, just like that. Of course, that's currently a pan, and we <laughs> need it to actually be a shelf. So we're right. going to browse for the second file. And the second file is Aqua shelf main void. And when I import that and turn it into a hole, I now have the, uh, the, the hole, which is the exact same size as the main hole through the cap. Right. All right. So I've got that lined up. The next piece is this. I'm going to go ahead and import the B3, which is the Aquavase, the Aquavase shell air hole. Got wow. it. Right. I just that we're going to have to <laughs> we're going to have to go over. Oh, was it 50? 50? 50, 50 and, then and up the 20. 20 up. Yeah. yeah. So first, I'm going to turn it into a void because I, you know, I want it to remove material. Right, material. Not, you just have a giant pole sticking out of it. Yeah. <laughs> just, that wouldn't really work. And so shift, one, two, three, four, five, and then up two. Boop, boop. And so when I print this, that hole will be in the exact same spot as the hole on the other side. And because they're, because they're both circular, it doesn't yeah. matter. You don't have to mirror this. They right. actually will fit. I mean, if you look, where is that? It's just the distance from the, the uh, outside circle. Precisely. Yeah. And, and uh, if you'll notice, even the ridges, the ridges line, line up. up. Yeah. By the way, people ask me, why don't I use the smooth? There is a smoother function in, in Tinkercad where I can make this nice ground. Yeah. Um, I actually prefer this look. I kind of like the faceted like, look. Yeah. If you want to do this project and make it super smooth, you can do that in Tinkercad. Mm -hmm. I just kind of like You like the this. little ridges? It kind of reminds me of the, um, <laughs> not the final boss, but the, the bad guy. Uh, Central computer in Tron. Yeah. Oh, You're MCP. Like, MCP. That yeah. is MCP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it too. Yeah. Uh, so we're making MCP here, and yep. we're going to be throwing our discs into it, and then turn it red. <laughs> Something's going to happen. Yeah. Parts of it are red. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So those are the easy parts. Now let's make the part that's a bit more complicated, and that is the skirt. Remember, this guy has a couple of functions. The first is it's going to hide the gap between mm -hmm. the the shelf and the uh, and the cap. The second thing it's going to do is it's going to lock it in to the, uh, the support uh, beams. Right, the so we just have added, added support. Added yeah. support, and it also it makes the unit kind of one unit. So rather than having the base and the LED with a vase inside of it, mm -hmm. locks everything together. Solid, yeah. Super solid. Cool. Right. So here we go. Same thing, we're going to go ahead and look at the helper files. In this case, I'm looking for first C, C1, Aquavase skirt. Mm -hmm. When I import that, it's going to give me my basic shell. Uh, and this is the, this is just a tiny bit larger than the uh, than the master control program that's currently behind me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Alex is on the job, folks. Actually, hmm. I think I just got a new know-how project. 
You want to make we're, him? I want to make them MCP. Oh, right? that would be a good project. Yeah, okay, we're making the MCP. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Alex. <laughs> oh, but okay, uh, so it, what was I talking about? Uh, oh, you're how, slightly, how we made this. slightly thinner or slightly, slightly wider? So, yeah. uh, so all I did was I took the STL file for this and then I made a large, and I turned it into a hollow. Yeah. And then I made, I put this circle over the top and it guaranteed that this would fit over this. Perfect. Yeah, that's all it was. So I've got this. Now I need to import my second piece. And my second piece is right here. The uh, C2 Aquavase Skirt Void. And by the way, my, my STL files have a very simple naming convention. If it says void, that means you're going to have to turn it into a hole after you import it. No, that's, that's pretty complicated. I know, right? <laughs> that's a lot to keep track of, Padre. <laughs> so here we go. And all that's doing is it's making sure that anything I add from here on uh -huh. will keep that space clear inside. Because right. if it doesn't, if there's anything that protrudes in... You won't be able to fit it over. Precisely. Yeah. It, it, it'll, be, it'll be a hang-up, one little piece that won't be able to slip down. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get our third piece. Our third piece is C3 Aquavase Skirt Risers. And this is what these look like. Boom. It's just... All this was uh, was a, uh, a piece right through the middle. Hmm. Uh, and then the... That they carved it off, even though I already cut it up. <laughs> so, uh, but this is these are just blocks right now. They're they're not right. going to do anything for us except ma waste a lot of filament, which is why we have the next file, which is Aquavase a C4 Aquavase Skirt Risers Void, mm -hmm. which when we import, gives us this. And since it's a void, I turn it into a hole, Boop. and now I've created voids in the sides here. Yep, and it's doing a couple of things. One, it actually strengthens it. Again, it's it's strength by subtracting. Ah. By changing the angles at which the force will be translated into the ring, right. it actually makes the entire structure stronger. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, be because before, the weak spot would be where it joins up with the ring, which means mm -hmm. the ring would snap. Here, the force gets distributed by here. The, the, it that's will actually flex that box before it snaps the ring, which right. is what I want. Um, and the only reason why I know this is because I... <laughs> Testing? Well, I, uh, I actually have uh, a CAD friend who does this a lot. He does oh. design. And he was saying, yeah, that actually makes it stronger. Oh, like, oh cool. Okay, cool. All right, so I need to add another piece. I'm going to browse. I'm going to bring in my uh, C5 aqua squirt, aqua, aqua, uh, that, that risers voids. This is on the side. This was more for just giggles. Uh, and then I'm going to raise it up. <laughs> just uh, extra voids? Yeah, by three millimeters, and all that does is it, it kind of makes it look badass. Yeah. <laughs> it, just <laughs> it just looks yeah. cool, Brian. Trust uh, me. I, I think uh, in in automotive world, they'd be called like speed holes. <laughs> like they don't really do anything, <laughs> but they make them look faster. And, and also it, it does reduce the amount of filament that I'm using. Right. But A just fraction. very minimally. I, I could leave that there, but I mean, look at this here. Be honest, audience. Look at this. It's little, little holes, right? <laughs> Look at this red ring of death. Okay, fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Cool. Just it's take cool. away my fun. You, know you should just make like little stars or something. You know, <laughs> little star cutouts. You, you, you want lightning bolts, Brian? Yeah, lightning, lightning bolts. bolts. Lightning bolts will make it go faster. Mm, okay. Now remember, all of those files are going to be found on the show notes. You don't have to copy them off the off the stream. We're going to give you <laughs> everything. You say off the street. You got to go <laughs> down to your, the street. your street 3D printer <laughs> vendor. <It's> like, <laughs> hey. Hey, uh, do you got a couple of STLs I can borrow? I'm going to STL for you. Just, just, yeah, <laughs> put it in my pocket. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and start the final assembly. The, okay. What we're going to need to do is uh, we need to spread a very thin layer of silicone sealant. Now, what I like to do is rather than putting a big glop on a single surface... You like to put it on your hands first and then... I, well, I like to coat on both sides. <laughs> oh, right. How about that? Let's, let's <laughs> just... Let's, Weirdo. Okay. Uh, silicone tends to, to lock up really easily, so uh -huh. I typically just jab it a little bit. Just, there we go. Okay. Nice and clean. Look at that, Brian. Ugh. Yeah. Gross. Gross. Okay, so <laughs> a little bit on this. Okay, so there's no like uh, scientific procedure here. This is huh? so scientific. You, how do you not see the science, Brian? Uh, <laughs> the science is I'm right there, man. I'm having a slow day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Uh, this is kind of an old tube, so it's uh, a little stick, sticky. It's been used a it's lot. It's been used a lot. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm pretty sure I stole this from uh, the work crew that was regrouting our showers. <laughs> <laughs> and now the showers leak. Nobody knows why. <laughs> so weird. But you know what? The vase doesn't, so... 
<laughs> There's no power going through the showers, Brian. That's not important. Yeah, that's only a problem for people who shower. This is this thing is really dead. There's like chunks of dried material in there, and every once in a while, it gets stuck in the nozzle. Gross. There we go. Oh wow. Oh, look at that, Brian. Uh, oh, so delicious. I think you, you, you might have gone a little overboard I think, there. I think this might turn out poorly. Um, yeah, let's sh let's show the audience mm. just how much silicone you use. Okay. Wow. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth it out because I don't want it all chunky. <laughs> You're just going to use that same sc screwdriver, huh? It's not a screwdriver. It's a or, pick. It's, oh, it's, it's a designed pick? for stuff like this. Oh, okay. No, seriously. It's scientific, Brian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's my response. No, seriously. Scientific. Yeah, it's science. science. It's I had to get certified for this. I know. This, I had, hey, I've got years of training in science. Okay. So. <laughs> you might have gone a little overboard there. I, I think I put like three times more than I actually needed. <laughs> Is there anything else we can stick together while we're at it? Hmm. <laughs> hey, Alex. <laughs> this is a bad line of questioning. Actually, no, seriously, I put about three times more than I needed. I got excited because I haven't used this in a while. Right. So always use more than... Whoa, that's a you lot. You can never use two more, that is, too much. This is way, way... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's... It's okay. Just put it back in the tube. <laughs> Don't worry. Put you, it back in the you tube. You think anyone will notice if I just, like, glop it out? Oh, <laughs> God. I just throw it in my coffee. Ew, mm. ew. What are you going to do with that? Um, just throw it on the maker mat? Let's put this in Josh's cubicle. <laughs> on his seat, so when he sits down. Uh, you'll never put, be able we'll to put leave. it in Tony's office next to a sign that says zero days since the last mistake. <laughs> Does Tony have a mistake? Uh, no. He doesn't have a mistake placard? Double standard. Totally double standard. All right, so, okay, I kind of... It's going to squish out. It's going to be bad. It's going to really, squish it's gonna out. It's going to be really, really bad. Uh, All right, so what we need to do is we need to, the only thing that's important is, is I up. have to line up the hole. So I've got an air hole here. Uh, your camera, there, yeah, there you go. I guess that one works. Uh, I Only if I had a light. I should put a light under here. Uh, do you want me to use my cell phone? Like, yeah, here. Yeah, there we wait, go. Wait, I don't know if I want to get my cell phone near it. I'm not going to glop your cell phone mm -hmm. much. So you want underneath? Yeah. Oh. oh. Because you don't want to me mess that up. There, I ah, see. Boom. What? Okay. I what? guess that's lined up. Okay. And uh, that's a lot of excess. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> Better to have too much lot. silicone than too little, right? Uh, and this is the other reason why I like using the kind of the faceted look, because you can tell. You can kind of line up the facets. Oh, if it was right, perfectly right, right. round, you wouldn't be able to. So just a little bit of squeezing. And then I take my clamps. Clamps. The clamps. And actually, I want to go this way. Hmm. Oh, these are kind of heavy duty feeling. They're so heavy duty. <laughs> this is not <laughs> annoying and long taking at all. <laughs> okay, so there we go. That's one side. I think okay, I can get one more in there. You want to use another clamp? Yeah. There we go. I'm going to clamp the same side down, huh? Oh, dang it. <laughs> you couldn't say that a couple seconds ago, Brian. I was just waiting. I wasn't sure. Just biding my time. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And so what I've got now is I've got a super tight, tight seal, and uh, so tight that all the rest all of the silicon it's kind of squirted out there. Ew. Ew. I think uh, you just made I it worse. Make it <laughs> You know what? I should probably get a napkin. Why? Why are you doing? Well, it? I'll do it afterwards. Here's the raccoon. Dry for, dry for an hour. Can we just use the raccoon? Oh, don't steal it. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna set this aside while it dries, and instead we're gonna practice on what we've got. So here okay. is our base, and this is the base that we made. So right. this works just fine. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put this inside. Got it. Okay. Then this is going to be our LED array. Yep. Okay. And actually, I've got another piece right here. It's missing the shelf, but we don't need the shelf for this example. No. So it's going to go over the top where the shelf would be. Right. Like so. And cover all the okay. excess silicone that you had there. And that will go over the top. Mm -hmm. Now I get to choose which length of uh, two by one. In this particular case, I'm going to take the smaller one because mm -hmm. I'm assuming I'm going to start germination of something new or right. something that's very, very small. It's going to be a little guy. A little teeny tiny guy. It goes through mm -hmm. that, through that. You want to get the side? Sure. There you go. Make sure it goes all the way down. I guess, couldn't you do uh, screw holes through here too? Yes, and actually I've built in screw holes. If you look at the STL files, they're actually there. So if you really, oh. really want this to be 
strong. You can just put a quick screw through each one and mm -hmm. it will hold it down to the base. Yeah. And then this just slips on right up top like so. Ta -da. That's actually the completed assembly. So once that dries, I'm going to be able to replace this red piece, oh, that, that, the, this red piece here yeah. with that black piece. And I kind of wanted the offset colors, so I've got red up top and then black in the middle with a little red band. You know? Man, okay. look at you getting all creative. It's kind of cool, right? Yeah, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen this much creativity out of you in a while. Aww. Well, <laughs> this is our, like wow. as artistic as you kind of get, though. I, no, I like it. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> trying to compliment you, I okay, think. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, uh, what we're going to do in the next episode is we actually have to build up the power system for this. Because uh. in the back, what we have is we still have all the wires that we left after the last assembly. So right. this, these are the wires that go to the Arduino mm -hmm. and the WS2812 lights. And then these three wires, we have one wire for the ground and then one wire each for the LED array and for the full spectrum. Because okay. remember, we wanted the ability to turn off the LEDs, the blue LEDs, so we could see the actual color of the plant. Right. But also turn them on and turn off the, uh, the full spectrum LEDs right. whenever we just wanted it to grow. We need to program in um, a cycle though. Don't we? Like, uh, turn the light off after 12 hours, turn the light back on after... Well, we're going to do that when we get to the advanced power. Oh. So oh. what we're oh. going to do next time is we're just going to show them. I, I've got a little 3D printed case uh -huh. that uses four switches that allows them to turn off each one on and off. Eventually, when we do the advanced power stuff, we're yeah. going to show them how to use the remote. And I'm also going to build a little Arduino module that can turn things on for 18 hours and turn off for six. Cool, yeah. I like that idea. Yeah, that's all coming in, net. well not all, the half of that is coming in next Thursday's episode of Know How, where we're gonna be guiding you through the uh, assembly of the power systems. O'Brien, yeah. um, I, it got me to thinking, what we should probably do is while I'm away at Rome, I'm mm -hmm. gonna leave this with you to see if you can make something grow. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, we, if you do it right, I shouldn't have to touch anything, right? Yeah, but I mean, I probably didn't, so you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, totally. Uh, I, could, I could keep an eye on something, some basil or something. The cool thing about this project is that it's going to give us another option when we want to do sort of indoor growing. Uh, right. And in the, in the past, we've done, okay, here's a pot, here's a light, here's a complete system. Uh, if, if you didn't want to be a serious grower, let's say you just wanted to grow one, one basil plant. Right. Oh, basil, 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 whatever it's it is. Basil. basil, basil. One basil plant. <laughs> you could do that and just, uh, and just crop it and pluck it. In fact, yeah. you remember when we were at that cafe near our hotel in Berlin? Yeah, that's and right. they actually had a pot of, of herbs just that you on could the just table. pluck and like, put on your food. Yeah, yeah. They, at every table, they had one of those. Like, what if you, <laughs> you could market this to restaurants, right? Have <laughs> people put them out at their tables? Like, it, here's, here's it a little it replaces, I mean, think about all the things it replaces. It replaces the little little herb shaker that you might have, and it also yeah. replaces the candle. I mean, this lights up. It's pretty. Exactly. And for people like us who aren't good with plants, if you can just plug it in and it cycles the light and it's right. watered, I guess the only thing you'd have to do is add fertilizer nutrients, nutrients, every, nutrients once every once in a while. while. Now, we oh. are, I'm actually working on that. Uh, that <laughs> yeah, of course we, you are. Already, all that does is it replaces the cap and uh -huh. the automated systems well, for true. cycling through the water, which will also uh, flood it with newts every once in a while. Yeah. That's all controlled by the same Arduino that will control the power. Ah, very cool. I just, it's not working. Right, right. <laughs> it did bad it did, did, Yeah, didn't it you did run really. into the problem where it just it flooded with fertilizer and killed all? Well, it was supposed to be 95% uh, pure water and 5% nutrients, yeah. and it ended up doing 95% nutrients. Something got flipped, water. right? <laughs> Plants did not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Plants don't do well, especially it, like we've talked about with hydroponic yeah. system, if something... It's super sensitive. Right away. There's like, no buffer. It's just like, oh, I guess I'm dead. Yeah, done. And this, this Sad part was uh, the damage had been done. So like I, when I got home, I, I washed everything. I'm like, oh, maybe I can save them. It's like, nope, nope. And you just <laughs> watch them getting sicker and sicker. It's like, I've already been poisoned. I'm just <laughs> right. dying slowly to torture you. Does ah. it please you to see me suffer? <laughs> well, folks, we know that this is a lot of information. And so we've made it very easy for you to get step-by-step -step instructions along with all the SDL files that we needed to build this. Where did they find those, Ryan? Well, you can find those at twit.tv slash kh. And not only will you find the show notes and links to things that you need, but you'll find a way to subscribe or download the episode if you need to. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm just looking through some of our screenshots <laughs> yeah. there. That, it's probably worth just going to see some of the pictures that get picked up. I wonder up. who's responsible for that one, Brian. That, 
that would be you. <laughs> 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 also, don't forget that you can find us on the socials, specifically on Google+. If you go to Google+, and you look for know-how, you can join. There's a very uh, quick approval process just to keep out all the spam accounts. But once you're in, you have access to 10,000 plus KIDAs. That's our know-it-alls. People along all steps of their maker DIY journey. If you're an expert, join to help the new people. If you're a noob, jump in and we will try to make a welcoming home for you to start your maker journey. Again, just go to Google Plus and look for know-how. That's right. But if uh, you want to know what we're doing behind the scenes, like when we went to IFA, we posted a lot of pictures mm -hmm. from when we were working there. Uh, you'll want to follow us on Twitter. I'm Cranky underscore Hippo. And I am uh, at Padre SJ. And we have a third member of the team, uh, Jimmy. Ah, uh, the kid. Jimmy, Jimmy Squiggly the kid. Legs, we used to call him. Champ. How's yeah. it going on over there, Champ? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't talk much. You can find him on Twitter at twitter.com slash ANELF3. See, I had to do it before he muted me. <laughs> He's also known as the Master Control Pro. Ooh, we should actually start calling him MCP. <laughs> And then start, and throwing, start discs throwing discs at him. At him. <laughs> 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 Folks, until next time, I am Father Robert Vallisere. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go build it. And throw discs at it. Ah! MCP! I need to rewatch this you, movie. You down into the, with MCP? Actually, I just watched it three nights ago. <laughs>